Two leading Democratic candidates for Senate who are looking to replace Senator Tom Udall in 2020 announced last week they would not accept any corporate political action committee or PAC money for their campaigns. On April 28th, Secretary of State and Senate hopeful Maggie Toulouse Oliver announced she would stand with the people and, quote, not take big money from corporations. Last week, CD3 Representative and Senate hopeful Ben Ray Lujan expressed a similar sentiment, saying his campaign would be, quote, run on New Mexican values that is built by the people, not corporations. And Janice, rejecting corporate PAC money seems to be a national trend, not just a local trend of things to do. But I'm curious from your side of the aisle, where you're coming from, does this mean anything to you when you see candidates not taking PAC money or pledging not to take PAC money? Um, I, I, let me be polite. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is a ruse. Uh, corporate PAC money plays such a small role, such a small role. Uh, although there are some, uh, especially the medical PACs, are, are quite large, mm -hmm. uh, and I don't see anybody walking away from those. But in the scheme of things, a corporate PAC mm -hmm. in and of itself is not the issue. It mm -hmm. is other super PACs, and you need to be worried about them. Right. So we're saying, please look over here, but the problem is truly over here. Gotcha. Interesting. That makes me swing to Dave. I like the way you <laughs> set me up there. Uh, you sent us all an interesting article from 2012 in The New Yorker where Jeffrey right. Tubin talked at length about the beginnings and how right. you know, uh, uh, everything just came about with this situation. But you feel like there's a lot of misunderstanding out there when it comes to I mean, PACs. I mean, I mean, what, the, the whole mm -hmm. idea of the super PAC, the, the federal super PAC, political action committee, yeah. is it's an entity, and it's a very simple entity to set up. You go to the FEC website, fec.gov, you could do it yourself. Right. And because of its federal law, it is available to everyone. It isn't just an evil thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, my, everybody votes is set up as a federal super PAC. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Stephen Colbert set up a federal super PAC, right. yeah. raised $475,000. Right. And, you know, and I think what we've done is we've, if you hear, like on my side of the aisle, you hear people say, you're a federal super PAC, oh my God, it's like Darth Vader has arrived, you know? Mm -hmm. but, but the entity can be used for good as much as it can be used for evil. It's okay. not going anywhere. Yeah. The Supreme Court decided. Citizens United, I don't know if it was a five to four decision, but it's here. Right. We're not getting rid of it, and we should take the entity, we should use it as for good as much as we use I would say, it for evil. But a super evil. PAC is not the same as a corporate PAC. They are very okay. different entities. Right, but, but, but on the other hand, if you say the corporate PAC, the federal super PAC, or the $25 donation to Bernie Sanders that raises $250 million. All of it's the same thing. It's money, right? It is money. And it is money. And where it comes from, I mean, most people you say, well, I'm a pack. Most people, except people like us who are nerds, have no idea what that is. You know, they have no idea. But they're more than happy to send their $25 into Act Blue or Red, or whatever. We don't have one. We don't have one. Okay. <laughs> so, I'm surprised. We don't. <laughs> and so, um, it's called Bank of America. But, the, but I think, that, you know, so the idea that we should, uh, you know, that the, the super PAC is only evil, I think is incorrect. It okay. is an entity that could be also be used for good and should be used for good. But don't okay. you think that the implication of a corporate PAC says that business is bad and 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 it's really they are very similar but here we're carving out that we are not going to take corporate PAC so. money. I don't think so. I, I, mean, think I think so? it's I think it's a, a difference between <clears throat> Democrats and Republicans really because you don't hear in fact this week we heard that the the Republican in that race was like I'm not doing anything like that. I'm not going to make any pledges but mm -hmm. on the Democratic side you really do have to say that because there is a big conversation amongst Democrats about the effect of corporate money on our elections. Mm -hmm. Now, the super PAC issue is, is there as well, um, but it doesn't necessarily mean that business is bad. I think what the, the candidates are trying to communicate is, I'm not going to make my decisions solely on the basis, or in this case at all, on the basis of which corporation gave me a big chunk of change. I'm going to make my decisions based on what I believe is best for my constituents. That's the messaging they're trying to put out there. Mm -hmm. Now, is it going to be like that at the end of the day? I'm, I don't have a crystal ball, sure, but right. at this point for yeah. Democrats, it's a box you have to check. Right. And if you don't check it, you immediately look like, well, actually, you're a Republican. I think Sophie's hit it. That, that's the big part of what's going on here. It's interesting. And on that note, Dan Boyd, interestingly, Maggie Toulouse Oliver, you mentioned a previous segment, primary season is on now. She didn't miss a trick here. She actually called out Ben Ray Lujan and said, you've taken about 180000 from big corporations prior to this. Will you give the money back? And see, to Sophie's point, you see where this is getting complicated already. It, it's who's going to be the more pure here about, about these right. things. Right, and so. not to be a political cynic, sure. uh, of course. But um, mm -hmm. I mean, I, th I think Sophie is right that, you know, once uh, Maggie Toulouse Oliver had taken that position, it 
Um, Congressman Lujan was probably smart to kind of take it off the table and say he wouldn't accept these either. Mm -hmm. But. But I mean, let's be clear, both these candidates have taken in the past money from corporations. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. And it's not like they're going to be running uh, $5 campaigns for an open U.S. Senate seat. There's going to be big money pouring right. into the race. Mm -hmm. Estimated at $15, billion, $15 million. Yeah, there's going to be big but, outside but, money. Right. There's going to be union right. money. Right. Um, but, but I also think one of the things that's really important to recognize is that if they're talking about what they're not taking money from, they're not talking about an issue. You know, and this whole idea that yes. I'm, gonna, I'm going to spend my time talking about where the money's coming from, where it's not coming from, who cares? Tell us how you're going to make an economy that works, how you're going to help rural New Mexico. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do? Like, you know, this it's a dodge. I mean, you know, when, rather than talking issues, we talk process about where I'm getting money from. Like, mm -hmm. who cares? Just talk about the issue. Janice, let me throw something out here. Uh, a previously mentioned sort of not by neighbor Republican uh, Gavin Clarkson. Yes. I thought had it, he made an interesting point in his quote here saying about Ben Ray's not taking all this money. What about personal quote? What about personal donations from middle management and up from corporations that have PACs? That's an interesting point. I think he, Homeboy's on to something there. Well, actually. I think so too. And if yeah. you look at the numbers for Ben Ray, in, in the last election, he took $181,000 from casinos, right. uh, not just a PAC, but from casinos, and another $172,000 from healthcare professionals. Right. And, and did that really translate into his, his uh, agenda in the Congress? We can debate that all along. Sure. But, uh, but I, I do think that that's important. And so mm -hmm. I would advocate, as we talk about changing. Uh, whether or not uh, we're going to do uh, remove Citizens United, but we've tried everything. Maybe it's time to say, if you want to give money, you put your name on it. You don't put it with anybody else. That's you right. report it or you don't give. That's right. But, but so can, I, can yeah. I get somebody to pick up on that? Hold mm -hmm. on a quick sec, Dave. That idea uh, where Mr. Clarkson coming from about, you know, if you can write a big check and you're... It, it, uh, let me back up. He's basically if talking it's, about if, bundling, right? Right. If it's yeah. about, well, not so much that, but it's about influence. Mm -hmm. You know, does it matter if it comes through this direction or if, or if that executive writes the check from this direction? It's all influence at the end of the day, isn't it? Well, I, you know, I suppose, mm -hmm. I suppose so. I, I think that the <clears throat> the bigger challenge at this point mm -hmm. is, and, and and you know, we heard just a moment about it. It takes so much money right. to run a political campaign at this point right. to to be a viable candidate. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're hearing this back and forth during the primaries. Right. You know, whoever wins this primary is going to have to put on a major campaign. They're going to need to That's get right. money from where they can get it. That's right. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, this, this signaling early on may help get you through the primaries, but at some point, um, there's some major fundraising. And, and we, as a, as a polity, we haven't addressed the, the um, huge burden that that places on our democracy, the fact mm -hmm. that our Congress people and our senators are fundraising constantly throughout the time that they're in office. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that it becomes very difficult to turn away money and we see candidates, not these candidates necessarily that we're talking That's about right. now, but we see candidates who really struggle with, do I have to give money back? Because now somebody uh, who seemed acceptable right. or an organization that seemed access acceptable doesn't anymore, mm -hmm. um, Harvey Weinstein. And, uh, <laughs> and it's a really complex issue that mm -hmm. does take our politicians away from what we actually want them to be doing. Mm -hmm. Would you support, you know, the idea has been floated out there, caps, uh, Janice's point about putting your name on it. There's no one silver bullet here. It, you know, it just, either locally or nationally, but, but locally what we're talking about. Because your point earlier, it's going to take a lot of money to get this done on a statewide race. A right. ton and, of money. And in the state, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. there are campaign contribution limits, and, and that's, mm -hmm. you know, in, in a way you could say that that's been kind of undone by Citizens United mm -hmm. and now right. given more power to these super PACs who, who aren't limited in what they that's can right. mm -hmm. spend. So, you know, a candidate can only accept a certain amount of money from a, you know, an ordinary citizen, but mm -hmm. then they can, these outside PACs can come in and spend huge right. And I think exactly. there's a certain amount of, um, maybe I'm a little paranoid or whatever, but I think there's a certain amount yeah. of like, there's this kind of, so if I take public money, will the PACs be there? That kind of um, calculation that goes right. on. Right. But, but just to be clear too, so if you read the, the New Yorker article, mm -hmm. if you are a federal, if you are a super PAC, it is, uh, Money Unlimited was the name of the article. It, you can give unlimited money to these super PACs. There is no cap. Mm -hmm. right. If you have $10 billion, well call me, but you can, <laughs> you can, you can give $10 billion. Right. There is no limit. And if that super PAC right. wanted to right. pump $10 billion into a particular race, right. 
they could do it. They're just not supposed to coordinate. They're not yeah. coordinating. They're not supposed yeah. to talk to the campaign. Is, That's is right. Really, but just to be clear, she one other number to remember. So the night the midterms that just passed in November of 2018, 5.2 billion dollars was overall campaign spending um, for all the races nationwide. Mm. That's quite a bit of money, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, it's right. good for the economy possibly if you're a political consultant. But that is a lot of money, and I'm not sure we're getting a real bang for our buck. <laughs> well, I agree yeah. with you, but a, a bigger point is for our federal races. 68% are out of state and mostly PAC money. Right. And yep. and so what does that say about New Mexicans that we're a cheap date, easy to yeah. buy our state? Right. Yeah. I don't like that. Yeah. And and I think we need to change that conversation. Good point there. Good way to finish too, out of time on that issue. But when the line comes back, we'll discuss new developments for Spaceport America.